today's topic for the webinar, why B2B is the new B2C, um, B, B2B commerce with SAP and Magento. And thank you to Suva and InSync for hosting. Uh, I'm Gene from the Plum Tree Group. We're also joined uh, by Commerce Blend today. Uh, I will be one of your presenters along with Solano uh, from InSync and Maria from uh, Commerce Blend. So getting right into it, hashtag B2B is the new B2C for more information afterwards to join the conversation on Twitter. And what we'd like to cover today, we have a lot of things we're very uh, anxious to share. Uh, the first big topic, why B2B is the new B2C. We've been he hearing the phrase for about a year now, uh, but no one has really delved into the why and how of that. So we'll be exploring that today, along with B2B digital commerce trends, uh, assessing your needs as a business and how to create what's called a Moscow list, Magento B2B specific features, uh, the InSync Magento SAP business coordinator, how those two systems uh, integrate, and then we'll look at uh, one or two case studies uh, before going into Q&A. So two things at the outset, uh, today's session is being recorded. We'll make the entire deck and recording available to everyone uh, who's on the line. So no need to uh, take notes furiously. And, uh, and the other thing is that we will have uh, a Moscow analysis uh, as a giveaway. And this will help you to go uh, one step beyond identifying the particular needs of your business for B2B. We'll explore a little bit uh, more what this is all about during today's session. So for the, the main topic, why B2B is the new B2C? Forrester forecasts that B2B will be a $1.13 trillion market by 2020. Uh, notice steady growth in B2B online, a year-to-year -year growth about 9% average, and a share increasingly inching towards 10% of the overall uh, online market. And so the question that I put out to everyone today is where are you currently on the B2B continuum? Is your business pure B2C at one extreme? Is it pure B2B at the other extreme? Or is it somewhere in between where you may have a B2B component of your business? You might look at it as though you have B2B light, if not a full board B2B, where there's a very strong blend between your B2B and B2C online business. And to give you a couple examples to get a sense of what these in-between uh, definitions are. Here's a business called Art of Tea. If you notice, uh, they have a wholesale option. And so you may have wholesalers uh, and offer wholesale pricing to some of your users, which really gives you kind of a B2B component to your online business, even if you're not a full bore B2B business. So that's one, one way to be uh, in between. Another is, uh, for example, your B2B customers may actually be businesses, like an interior designer ordering furniture for a client. Uh, Ethan Allen is a great example of a site where they have a very blended B2B, B2C business. They have what's called a design service and inspiration. Uh, behind a login, you can, you can actually collect things that inspire you on the site create an idea board, and then turn that idea board concept into the room of your dreams, what they call. So they've created this whole B2B experience within their B2C site. And so that's part of that blended B2B, B2C that we're talking about. Another example, uh, imagine a restaurant. You think of typically as a B2C business, but if you have a corporate event where you rent tables or perhaps a room or the whole restaurant, then it's a big B2B event in a B2C context. And the same kind of parallel can be done online to help uh, propel your business. And oftentimes your greatest B2C customers are actually uh, B2B. We recently got a call from the Chicago Cubs asking Plumtree Group if we wanted to have an event at the game. And so I realized you think of uh, going to a Cubs game or, in this scenario, a Blackhawks game as a B2C experience. Uh, but not only, again, can there be uh, group-sponsored events that bring in a B2B component, um, but in this image, 
you can also have sponsors and advertising in a B2B, in a B2C context. So if you imagine a, a rink as your website, there are a variety of ways that you can connect to other businesses, whether advertising, whether mentioning other businesses in a blog, having links that connect the two sites and two businesses, where you actually have a symbiotic benefit to each other, even though it may not technically be to be a B2B arrangement. So B2B partners come in many, many different forms, and uh, hopefully this gets you thinking about where you might be in that spectrum. Um, so for the next phase of the presentation, I'm going to hand it over to Maria from Commerce Blend to explore whether you have what it takes to compete successfully in this newly blended B2C, B2B scenario. Maria, it's all yours. Thank you, such a warm introduction, and most of all, for clarifying to all of us that contrary to what most people would believe, this does not only need to be purely B2B or purely B2C. It is curious to realize that many businesses can be somewhere in between. Um, on my side, I'm Maria Delgado, and as a marketing specialist for Commerce Blend, I've come today to share with all of you some valuable advice and information about four major forces that are shaping B2B e-commerce trends today. So, in the first place, I'll say that if there is one piece of information you should all recall once this webinar has ended, is these four forces. Millennials, mobility, direct selling, and procurement processes. Why? Well, because the main point here is that altogether, these four are changing the traditional way of doing businesses on the B2B arena, starting by the fact that the customer's journey starts digitally. That being said, the first and probably most determining force to mention is millennials. Actually, they're trending as the new B2B buyers, obviously in some industries more than in others. And particularly speaking, the bigger share they take within the procurement's workforce, the more you should expect them to have some impact over the traditional B2B customer journey and how to make a B2B purchase. As a start, millennials are digitally oriented buyers, and because of that, they prefer to start the purchase process by doing some research on search engines. Once they find, find that web page that provided the best answer to their query, they will expect being capable of self-servicing themselves, since the moment when they explore your product catalog to the moment when they complete a purchase or simply get a quote. According to the latest studies shown by Shiba Research on June 2016, since the previous year, millennials accounted for around 42% of all B2B researchers. So if until now you were still thinking that this force might not be relevant for your business, then this step might invite you to start, to start thinking otherwise. The second force shaping B2B is mobility, a must have for 2016. But probably by now you've heard similar statements already that mobility and cross-device experiences, more than being a must-have for B2B, is a must-have for e-commerce overall. However, the specifics on this matter that B2B merchants, such as yourselves, should consider to keep pace with users' expe expectations is that 80% of B2B buyers have said they would use smartphones to access digital content for vendor and product research. And beyond that, you should consider the fact that purchase rates for B2B transactions on mobile have had a share above 20% since 2012. So as you can see, the growth rates for these two forces indicate that clearly there's a switch taking place and apparently a switch that is here to stay. In regards to the third force shaping B2B commerce, we will mention direct selling, which some years from now has delimited a path for B2B retailers to remain competitive in the market, and thus has fought against changes on buyers' behavior, intense competition on mature markets, and the rise of the age of the customer. Eventually, competing on the age of the customer implies that B2B retailers must lessen intermediation within their supply chain, not only to, have on not only to save on intermediation costs that might eventually be transferred to the B2B buyer, but most importantly, to know your customer better, what he wants, what he does his research on, what he doesn't like, and based on that, how you can differentiate not only your product or service, but the digital experience you deliver to him using web, app, web analytics. Finally, the fourth force shaping B2B commerce is the shift on procurement processes. 
As you might have guessed, this force comes almost as a consequence from the rise of millennials as B2B buyers. Already that according to reports from Forrester, Harvard Business Review, and IDC, 74% of B2B buyers conduct more than half of their research online before talking to a salesperson. And additionally, 75% of them will use channels such as social media to research vendors through customer ratings and word of mouth. Just to bring some examples of relevant social media channels for B2B, we could mention LinkedIn, Twitter, or Yelp. Clearly, this shows that B2B buyers, especially millennials, will trust more on their own research plus their peers' opinion and advice for purchasing one offering or the other, and instead will probably expect to reach out the sales rep mostly to discuss and agree upon contract and or negotiation terms. Now, given these major forces, the question that you might try to answer yourself is, how do I capitalize on these forces so my brand isn't lagged behind my competitors as B2B commerce grows? The first thing to consider is that one way or another, much of what has been discussed so far leads to customer experience. And curiously, even people like you, from the business owner or manager perspective, are unconsciously aware of this reality. Otherwise, why do you think 64% of your peers recognize their B2B website customer experience to be worse than the one offered by sites such as Amazon? while simultaneously believing that the same experience they offered was better or at least comparable to the one offered by their competitors. The previous happens because you must take into account that usually B2B buyers are also B2C buyers, and consequently, they will expect to have the same seamless, practical, and compelling experience no matter their focus. As a matter of fact, 68% of B2B shoppers say they're unlikely to return to a website that does not provide a satisfactory customer experience. Now, the second thing to consider when capitalizing on the major forces is personalization. You can do so by taking care of some website features that are particular to B2B, such as product recommendations, a special pricing list, repeat past orders, content that is specifically, specifically tailored to your business model, industry, and needs across devices, and bestseller list. Even more, all of the previews should eventually point to something called account-based marketing, which basically is an approach that puts sales and marketing to work together around high-value customers by layering profile-based targeting, so eventually their communication across digital channels is more tailored and improved with precision. It's almost like one-on-one -on -one marketing. Now, um, probably if we go back a little bit on personalization, in order to successfully deploy it, on your B2B website, take these two advices. First, segment well your customers, probably by creating databases based on contract pricing, order volume, industry, and so forth. Second, make sure your various systems, such as e-commerce platforms, ERPs, and CRL, CRMs talk to each other. In that way, you'll be able to improve customer engagement based on the data you collect. Actually, this is the topic that we will address later on in the presentation when we discuss about integrating Magento to SAP Business Connector. Moving on, the third thing to consider when capitalizing on the major forces is quality content. B2B buyers want as much detail as possible from both a written and visual perspective when trying to learn about your product. That's why 8 out of 10 B2B companies will consider content marketing as an important part of their digital strategy. Consequently, for a B2B website, it would be ideal to provide multiple forms of detailed product information. Also, it would be ideal to provide content that particularly facilitates the process for B2B buyers, such as practical product information. Trainings and demos are just some examples. Best practices, case studies, customer ratings related to the vendor, data and stats reports. Particularly speaking, formats such as video works really well with B2B buyers, especially if they're millennials, who on a proportion of 29% prefer to consume content in this format above others. Also, a search is something that comes naturally with B2B buyers. You must ensure to provide searchable content either off-site or on-site. On many cases, this is a feature that most B2B websites fail to fulfill, same as when providing interactive product catalogs which are completely different to offering a PDF version of your print catalog. Up next, 
We have marketplaces as the fourth thing to consider when capitalizing on the major forces. On one hand, look at marketplaces as an opportunity to find new customers and easily propel sales growth, as they've shown promising growth potentials and new market opportunity to attract business from wholesale, distributors, and manufacturers on a global scale. As an example, we've got Amazon Business, which hit 1 billion sales in, within the first year after its April 2015 launch, and is growing 20% month to month. The previous, because the position and arm, positioning and brand awareness that those marketplaces have gained facilitates the tasks of attracting qualified visitors. So always keep in mind that on a daily basis, your user might have higher chances of, of landing on a marketplace site first than on your website. On the other hand, look at B2C places as a reference for improving your B2B customer experience and even personalization features. That being said, you might want to think, why would a B2B buyer prefer to do the purchase on a B2C marketplace such as Amazon? You, come up, you might come up in the end with the idea that things such as broad variety of products from different vendors at different prices on different locations provide B2B busy buyers with a convenient solution to simplify time consuming and extensive extra tasks. Finally, the last thing to consider when capitalizing on the major forces is mobile for B2B. On most cases, payments between businesses are carried out primarily through paper checks, credit card, credit card transactions, or ACH payments. The idea of innovating and offering a more compelling user experience on this field will be to increase efficiency, timeliness, and security of payments, while reducing transaction costs and centralizing payment tracking. As an example, mobile wallets might be a convenient solution for B2B payments, as a tokenization system is used at the point of the transaction so that the buyer's account number is never revealed to the seller. However, while this type of, so of solutions is adopted by most businesses, it will still be important to provide variety on payment methods. Also, when you think about apps and B2B, you reckon that it's equally important to drive deeper engagement through clear and concise content as well as keeping forms and authentications minimal. So moving on, and now that you know what is the minimum threshold in terms of customer experience, take a look at this slide and try to answer to yourself, what are you missing? What are your needs to successfully, your, successfully run your B2B store? Okay, now we'll actually tell you how Magento will help you capitalize on these on the forces and trends shaping B2B commerce. And consequently, I'll hand off the show to my colleague, Jean. So Jean, the stage is yours. Maria, thanks so much for the insights on the, the four major forces that are reshaping B2B and how we bring that back to capitalizing on those forces with Magento. Uh, for those of you uh, who are not familiar with Magento, uh, merchants love the platform for quite a variety of reasons. Uh, because it's open source and it's very flexible, a Magento can be uh, customized and tailored to meet very specific uh, business requirements. And uh, it's highly extensible. Magento has long had a marketplace of extensions uh, from all of its uh, vast ecosystem of developers and vendors out there that are continually expanding what the platform is capable of. Um, Magento, unlike proprietary platforms where you have very little control, with Magento you have full ownership of your site and you can shape it as you see fit. It's also built to scale so that if you have increase in traffic and uh, performance is not impacted regardless of whether your traffic doubles, quadruples, quintuples. Um, so it's extremely flexible from a functional standpoint and from a performance standpoint, and the vast ecosystem is there for support on many levels. So you're not bound or stuck with uh, one solution or one vendor. All of these contributing, have contributed to Magento continuing to be the number one digital commerce platform for the fourth year in a row. 31% of the mid to large companies uh, rely on Magento for e-commerce, uh, far more than any other vendor, including Demandware and Hybris. 25%, um, one quarter, 
of all the e-commerce sites in the Alexa Top 1 million uh, are, are currently using Magento. And Magento, even on the enterprise level, has 45 customers uh, with more than 100 million in annual sales, which is more than double uh, demandware. Now, specifically looking at B2B features, with the introduction of Magento 2.0, uh, they rolled out accounts features that set user roles and permissions, uh, accept payments on credit and manage credit status, uh, which are huge for on ordering, it allows you to reorder easily from prior orders, and with catalogs and pricing, allows you to assign custom catalogs and pricing to your customers. All very rich B2B features that are making uh, the Magento experience more and more uh, B2B friendly. And for those requirements that go beyond the default, uh, because again of its extensibility, uh, together with customized solutions from skilled partners uh, be, that are B2B focused, Magento Enterprise allows you to deliver a lot of additional functionality through add-ons, uh, whether it's account management, allowing your admins to manage uh, roles, accounts, and permissions, Quick order, which is very beneficial for uh, for streamlining bulk orders. Inventory tracking that allows you to track inventory across multiple locations. Um, negotiated pricing terms, mobile responsive design, ERP connectors, which we will be delving into in a little bit within Sync, uh, and many other B2B features, whether it's uh, net terms, uh, credit limits, tier pricing. Uh, quotations and uh, multi warehouse as we alluded to earlier so it's it's virtually unlimited the number of add-ons and customizations you can do to, to streamline and customize your b2b experience being a b2b business yet presenting a b2c experience for our customers was very important and Magento allowed us to do that says Brad Coons from Zotus Along similar lines, thanks to the smooth operation, high usability of Magento, the acceptance of the new solution is outstanding. Furthermore, we can handle the orders of Burger King much more efficiently, says Oliver Yager from Burger King, showing again the, the great reach of Magento in the e-commerce space. Perhaps even more exciting are the roadmap B2B features. Uh, in, in this case, by Q2 of 2017, well, Magento is anticipating releases for accounts that allow you to create and manage company accounts and account hierarchies to assign super users in ordering to create and manage requisition lists, quick ordering by SKU, and in terms of quotes to support requests for quote processes, manage quotes notifications, and change history very easily. So these are on deck for the B2B features uh, with release anticipated for early next year. And as we mentioned earlier at the outset, uh, assessing your needs with the use of a Moscow list is something that is really of great value to the B2B process. Moscow list helps you to prioritize and to reach a common understanding with all stakeholders. And to give you a sense what exactly is a Moscow list, uh, the M is for your must-haves, those minimum usable subset of requirements that a project must have in order to guarantee delivery uh, by the deadline. And this alone will lead to the project's success. The shoulds, uh, the S in the Moscow, are important but not absolutely necessary to the success within the time frame that you have for the project. The coulds are desirable, but not absolutely necessary, though they could improve user experience if there is bandwidth to include those features. And the won'ts are really not critical or, or even appropriate uh, in the time frame for the project. Here is a sample of a, of a Moscow uh, analysis. If you see here, you can go through different categories of, from user experience. How important is mobile responsive design? or a touch-friendly UI or personalization. Are those must-haves for your project? Should-haves, could-haves, won't-haves? Same with the admin experience. Uh, do you need to have tiered permissions or configurable table views, uh, bulk editing by attribute? These are all things that you can go through with your team and assess uh, to help prioritize your needs for the project and look whether it's sales process, 
process catalog and other uh, categories as well. And this is a sample of a Moscow analysis. And the way that you go ahead and create this is first through establishing requirements by meeting with the rest of your team and deciding what is the final goal of the project, what has to be done in order to get there on time. And when you go through the prioritization of these requirements, um, by ranking them, it helps your team to understand what is absolutely critical and essential and what uh, is lower uh, on the list of priorities. The must-have requirements shouldn't take more than 60% of the effort unless there is a low factor, external risk, or estimates that are known to be accurate. Um, and the Moscow list template, uh, as we showed earlier, will help, uh, help you to have a head start with your team to go through and prioritize all these items and will be uh, available as part of this presentation and helps you to add timelines, responsibilities, and resources. Uh, it's an invaluable tool to going through and assessing your B2B needs. And then finally, you want to discuss and review your priorities uh, with the team throughout the development of every project. It is important to review these priorities and new specs can be fundamental, others really are not that urgent. And knowing just how to assign, uh, come to agreement with the team, and prioritize these requirements is, is critical to the success and timely delivery of, of any project. So without further ado, I would like to pass the reins over to Solano at InSync so he can walk us through uh, the integration between Magento and SAP with Business Connector. Uh, so, Solano, the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Hi, Gene. Uh, uh, thanks uh, for you know explaining how Magento can be an excellent uh, platform for catering B two B needs and uh, also uh, explaining for you know how to you know do the Moscow analysis. So, I would be taking over and explaining how uh, we uh, as NSYNC uh, you know provide integration between Magento and. Uh, ERP back office systems like SAP and other Microsoft ERP solutions. So first, I'd like to explain uh, the common scenarios uh, where you know certain configurations are made uh, in the ERP's end on the in the back office system in organizations who operate in a B2B model. So uh, so when organizations operate in a B2B model, these are certain common features uh, that are there which are required in the ERP side. So uh, when you interact, when you are an organization who is operating on a B2B model, you're most likely to have uh, customers of yours who would have multiple contact persons. So your organization might be interacting with multiple uh, contact persons from that organization. Uh, so you must be maintaining contact persons uh, in your ERP system. And maybe you might also have sales representatives from your organization who are allocated with these, uh, allocated for these contact persons who reach out to these contact persons uh, for you know answering their queries or uh, to push uh, the sales. So uh, then, when you're operating in a B2B model, you're most likely to also have customer-specific pricing. You can have uh, you know different customer groups. Your uh, customers, your B2B customers, uh, might be you know uh, divided into several groups or levels. You might segregate them based on their levels. So you can have different pricings for them. You can also have uh, specific discounts uh, being uh, offered to each of these groups or you know individual customers. So all these are you know most likely to be configured in your ERP. And certain other uh, features which are also very common in B2B uh, scenarios are maintaining credit limits for customers. Uh, maintaining volume discounts uh, where you give off an extra uh, discount when uh, certain items are uh, purchased in a particular number or more than that. And uh, in case of make to order or make to stock approach in both these approaches, uh, if it's a make to stock, you'd probably be maintaining inventory for your items in different warehouses. And if it's a make to order, uh, you might be uh, having some reports being generated uh, in your Mac Office ERP system, which uh, tells you the uh, next rival date. Uh, or next uh, date when your next lot of items would be manufactured and put into stock in the warehouses. So now move into the common configurations uh, and features uh, that you are most likely to expect from a uh, e-commerce platform, which is uh, capable of uh, you know having, a, which is capable of you know operating on a B2B model. So Magento, as uh, Gene mentioned, is already an excellent uh, platform for uh, B2B needs. And it has got some amazing native features to support uh, B2B model and B2B operations. 
but uh, to extend the basic and the standard features that are there in Magento, we uh, we install an add-on uh, onto Magento that basically extend its uh, B2B capabilities. And these are certain features uh, that are offered out of this add-on. So, for example, we allow maintaining multiple uh, accounts for the contact persons of your uh, B2B customers in the Magento. So, so that these contact persons can come into your store and place orders. They can, uh, you know, place queries or place orders. And then your sales representatives uh, can also have an account in the Magento store. So, already, so although the web savvy, I mean, the digitally oriented uh, web customers of yours uh, would most likely uh, would come to your, you know, online store, your B2B portal, and place an order. But it often happens due to uh, the absence of internet connection. They might even just prefer giving a call to the sales representative of your organization and ask them to place a order. So, so for this reason. An account for the sales representatives is also important uh, to be there in the Magento B2B store. So you can have a separate account for the sales representatives in the Magento uh, portal. Uh, you can have customer specific pricing. So if your individual customers have, you know, being allocated specific price lists uh, in the back of ERP, so it should also be there in the Magento. Uh, you can have different discount uh, configurations being configured into Magento, some of which are, you know, native uh, to Magento. Uh, like the group uh, pricing is something that is there uh, in Magento by default. Company specific catalog. Uh, this is a very common feature and is often required by a lot of uh, organizations operating on a B2B model where you have specific categories or catalogs of products being uh, allocated uh, to specific customers. So when they log in, they uh, not only see the prices which are there for them, but they also see the products which are specifically there for them. And then another set of customers probably theme set of products. So uh, product specific, uh, uh, you know, company specific catalog is one important feature. And then placing orders uh, with the purchase order. So uh, in B2B model, so your customers are most not like most likely uh, not would place orders with uh, online payments. So they would, they are most likely to also make payments uh, later on at the end of say a couple of months. So a credit limit. Uh, might be main, uh, might be required to be maintained in the Magento store, which is actually uh, defined and maintained in your back of his ERP, but also needs to be maintained in your Magento. And the same way, certain customers, uh, you might also want to provide this option to your customers that they might only be able to uh, place an order by attaching a purchase order uh, document onto the Magento and provide a number for the purchase order, and they can move forward with that. So in that case, uh, this feature should also be there in the Magento. And the order approval checkpoint uh, is a very important uh, feature that is required in the Magento side. Now it differs from organization to organization. Certain organizations want the order approval checkpoint to be there in the backend in the ERP system. And for certain organizations, uh, they prefer it to be there in the Magento. So if an order gets placed by a B2B customer, you might want uh, the Magento admin or someone from your organization to check that order and approve before it flows down uh, into any other application with which the Magento is connected. So moving on to the next slide, I'll just uh, so I'll give a brief on uh, what kind of environment you'd be expecting if you connect uh, Magento operating on a B2B model and your back office ERP system, for example, if it's SA Business One. So uh, the main advantage of integrating your both platforms is that so both your systems would be connected seamlessly and the informations and the, and the set of information would be flowing back and forth between the two platforms. So you would not need to, you know, manually feed in information on any of the ends. So whenever a new set of information is being generated or defined on any of the sites, it will flow to the other end. So for example, uh, some, so you, you, uh, uh, you're some, you have a new B2B customer who has signed a contract with you and you have created an entry in your back office ERP system like SA Business One with the contact persons and you allocate a, uh, you allocate a sales representative for your organization as well with the customer. So that entire set of information can be pushed into Magento and all the accounts for the contact persons can be created for that customer, a sales a rep account that has already been created in the Magento store or might get uh, newly created in Magento store can be associated with the organization, with that company. So then the contact persons can place an order uh, for that B2B company, B2B customer of yours, or your sales representative can also place an order uh, for that company. So in this way, the orders which is placed, uh, which are placed on the Magento can flow down into your back office ERP system 
and uh, it can be defined where, where the order approval checkpoint has to be uh, there. So uh, the products can, that can be, uh, you know, that are defined in the back office system like SAP can be all be listed in Magento with all their details, uh, with their high definition images or, or their, you know, details and other attributes. Uh, and there's product and there are customer specific prices as well so that the customer who logs into Magento gets to see the price uh, which is relevant to this particular customer uh, and the prices for which uh, there has been a contract being signed and in case of uh, make to stock uh, you know scenarios the stock in real time can be fetched from the SAP and pushed into Magento so you'd never have a out of stock scenario on the online store and in case you are operating in a made to order scenario you can also uh, get the next uh, you know available date for the product uh, you know pushed into Magento for example in case of SA business one specifically uh, we get the uh, you know next available promise report of SAP and put it into Magento so that when a B2B customer uh, tries to place an order and if he sees that a particular item is not there in stock they can also uh, see the next date by which the item can be you know, made available and they can place an order. So these are certain scenarios, uh, you know, where it's very crucial that the two platforms are integrated and without an integration, uh, you know, your order cycle is most likely, uh, you know, going to become a bit slower and, you know, there's also a chance that, you know, the information is not going to uh, get into the other platform in their most accurate uh, state. So that's all in all a uh, brief about what kind of benefits you'd get if you uh, integrate a Magento and SA Business One. Uh, next, we have some uh, case studies uh, to showcase, uh, you know, certain uh, you know scenarios where certain organizations have used Magento for their B2B and they have also integrated with their back office ERP. So uh, I think Ali uh, from Plumtree Group will be taking over and explaining a few of the uh, case studies. Well, um, thank you, Solana, for, for that intro, yeah. um, introduction. Um, I'm going to speak first about the two first case, first, the first two case studies very briefly, mm -hmm. because there's one particular case that we want to showcase to you, which is the Richardson Cab case, and which is where uh, both InSync and Plumtree have collaborated. So the first example we have here is Leaf, the sports product. Uh, basically, the, what they needed um, to be done, it, they wanted to streamline e-commerce operations with inventory, order management, and shipment process. Also, they wanted to eliminate manual data entry and data duplication. Uh, they wanted real-time data exchange to ensure online user satisfaction. And most importantly, they wanted to maintain both B2B and B2C business processes from a single website. Uh, eventually, uh, up next, what they got as value is that they got a fully automated sync in real time, end-to-end -end mapping between e-commerce and ERP business processes, software scalability, support, e-commerce growth, and geographic expansion, improved efficiency in sales, purchase, and inventory management, and, and that's in regards to the lead. So if we have a look at the testimonial, the testimonial that was given by Herman Kuhler, he says, our main goal was to establish automated integration between our e-commerce site and our back office, SAP Business One. Apps connected most of the boxes to fulfill our requirement and helped us save huge amount of time and resources by eliminating the need to manual capture and update data. AppC Connect has simplified our day-to-day -day processing and is capable and flexible enough to match most of our business needs in terms of system integration. By the way, AppC Connect is the name that Insane gives to the connector, right, Solano? Solano? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Okay, good. So, moving to the second case, we have uh, Premier Research Labs, which is a nutritional supplements brand. And what they needed was to connect Magento Enterprise e-commerce websites with ACP Business One uh, ERP. They also needed um, two Magento websites exchange the data with two company databases of ACP Business One to sync data based on company specific. And they needed real-time data sync for sales orders for further processing. What eventually they got as value is uh, they got a mapping of business processes between offline and online system through pro proper business logic, quick processing of sales orders, 
to real-time sync of Magenta Web Orders into SAP B1, and it's to, it was just a matter of set and forget. Probably, I don't know, Suango, if um, you want to add some additional information in regards to those cases, as well, basically, you guys were the ones working on this too, particularly. Uh, yes, so both of these uh, organizations have been uh, using uh, Magento as their uh, B2B platform, and they have been using uh, SAP Business One uh, for quite some time now. So uh, initially, uh, it was uh, you know a big challenge for them since they were uh, moving onto you know uh, a digital platform uh, to uh, you know operate on a B2B model. But uh, once they uh, you know they got used to you know the B2B platform being uh, Built up on Magento, and we connected with the SU Business One. Uh, they personally uh, mentioned us, mentioned to us a lot of times that things have become a lot of a lot easier for them uh, to operate uh, with the uh, with the online on the online B two B model uh, based on the Magento, and the integration with the integration, their order process have become far more faster, and you know having the set of information on both the sites have become a breeze in comparison to how it used to be uh, initially when they had. A normal uh, website, which is used to have, uh, you know, plain catalog without the features of having customers to place orders. Great. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So the next uh, slide. Yeah. Well, I, next uh, up next is just a testimonial from Terence McDavid uh, from Premier Research Labs. Um, I think it basically compels what you just said, Suwano. So uh, I think now we're going to talk about our the, the most relevant case study of this presentation, which is Richardson Cat case. And right now, I'll hand off the presentation to Ali Hashmi from Plumtree Group. So Ali, um, the stage is yours. Yeah, hello. Hi, everybody. This is um, Ali Hashmi. Um, I'll be presenting the, uh, the Richardson Cap uh, uh, project that we recently uh, completed. Um, it's Richardson Cap, just to give a little bit of background, they are the manufacturer and distributor of uh, sports uh, related hardware. So basically they create like uh, caps for uh, sports teams. Um, and they had um, a, you know, a requirement where they wanted us to um, not only build the, the front end uh, B2B store for, the, uh, for their uh, resellers, but also um, create like a personalization, personalization tool um, that will allow their Resellers to actually create custom custom caps using that tool, and and most importantly, they have this backend integration with with SAP, where in sync um, uh, you know connector the SAP connector was used, uh, and also there were some enhancements done based on their uh, business requirements. Gene, if you can uh, move the slide over, thank you. So yeah, so they, uh, so they, are, and and the unique part, I mean, the the topic we're talking about is here is B two B is a new B two C. So it has many uh, similarities of B two C, especially as far as the front end is concerned. Uh, they they were looking for a uh, for a site which can uh, you know look and feel uh, you know how the how typically the B two C sites uh, you know uh, behave, both in the on the desktop and on the on the mobile site as well. Um, the product personalization tool was also designed in a way that it can be easily used on on tablets and and mobile phones uh, with simple drag and drop, um, you know, and, and and doing the decoration decoration on the caps. Um, the uh, can you move the slide over, Gene? So uh, some of the the values that we deliver to the client is is certainly we uh, you know it's a state of the art modern modern kind of an interface uh, for their for their end customers. Um, and also, uh, this was built on Magento Enterprise Enterprise Edition. Um, it has the SAP integration, uh, like I said, with with the InSync connector. Uh, and with that, with that, the requirements have been that there were different user types that has to be uh, that has to be uh, synchronized. They have about uh, more than 10,000 uh, products that had to be synced between um, SAP and Magento. Uh, additionally, they, they have a very high order volume. With the resellers that have to be catered through the connector, and apart from that, there has been some custom business business logic around their uh, fulfillment and, and payment processing that has to be handled through through the connector. Um, and uh, and apart from that, there was a product personalization tool that also has to be factored in with all, with both the front end Magento and also with the with the SAP integration. So it's a pretty um, in depth B two B implementation. 
uh, where actually we provide uh, them the true value where their their resellers and their sales rep can use this uh, this application to not only um, you know uh, place uh, front end orders but also being able to uh, to to do the high volume high volume order order sales that they are looking to uh, to get it done from their from their B2B portal. Um, well, Ali, thank thank you for uh, for the detail on that case study, and Solano for uh, for walking through uh, the details on the integration, and and Maria for the other two case studies. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground already today, and the additional resource again we want to offer to everyone who's on the call is please don't forget uh, your Moscow analysis. I use the link that's shared in the chat window, so you can download this now. Um, again, this template has been adapted by Commerce Blend and Plumtree Group from the original version to help you assess and prioritize your B2B needs. And in summary of today, uh, if you walk away with a, with a few things, a few nuggets that can help you moving forward, obviously there are the four forces that are reshaping the B2B landscape. Uh, how critical it is for you to have systems integrations like between your ERP and Magento backend for uh, s efficiency and uh, for uh, processing of your business. And also, hopefully, we planted a seed if you had, don't already have some kind of blended B2B, B2C business scenario. There are a lot of opportunities out there, so perhaps being, becoming more creative, how you can be somewhere in the spectrum, perhaps moving from the left towards the right, where you add a B2B component to your business, uh, or you blend your B2B and B2C more by creating functionality, some kind of experience for your B2B customers that will entice them to spend time on your site and become perhaps among your greatest B2C customers by appealing to businesses and corporate user groups. Um, so that uh, that's sort of summarizes what we wanted to cover today. Um, at this point, I think we have a little time, Suva, perhaps to address uh, any questions that may have come up uh, during the course of the presentation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we have already received uh, some questions here, so I would like to quickly mention a few. So starting with about, I think we have received about uh, five, six questions. The first question we received, what B2B features can we get in default Magento? And so that's that's a very good question. If we go back a little earlier, let's see if we can find the exact uh, location. I think few things are already, you know, uh, present in Magento like uh, tier pricing customer group specific yeah. pricing so these kind of features yeah, are here's yeah. here's the specific so slide that we ad addressed that earlier today so with accounts uh, out of the box with 2.0 you can set uh, user roles and permissions um, accept payments on credit which is a great b2b feature and manage the credit s status um, with orders, it allows you to easily place reorders from previous orders, which again is a nice efficiency, and with the catalog to assign custom catalogs and pricing to the customers. So these are the out-of-the-box B2B features uh, that are new, new to Magento 2.0. Uh, the next question is, does Magento really can be a proper B2B platform or a custom website developed to suit business needs? is more appropriate. Um, I would say that it truly is a B2B platform and is evolving to be a more and more robust B2B platform. Even Forrester cited uh, Magento as one of the best B2B platforms available on the market. With the uh, roadmap features that we mentioned earlier, with, uh, with the add-ons that have already been developed and the skill of, uh, the skill of certain uh, solution partners, that are B2B focused, uh, Magento truly is uh, a robust B2B uh, business platform and one that's continuing to evolve so that some of the uh, ex current extensions or customizations will become more a part of the, the default offering moving forward. So in short, yes, it's a, it's a very, very robust uh, B2B platform with much room to evolve. Uh, 
Um, another question which I can see is what is credit limit and how this is important for B2B? So with credit limits, uh, let's say you have a B2B customer uh, that's an entrusted repeat uh, customer. You give them a $20,000 credit limit so they can go uh, on the site and place an order for say $5,000 worth of goods and then their balance is $15,000. So this allows uh, an immediate order. Um, it also, with credit limits, it encourages uh, more, more repeat business so it's not a, a new transaction every time they're on the site. Um, so credit limits is something that's very common in the B2B world uh, that really is a symbol of trust between the, the two organizations but also very much encourages and leads to uh, a lot of reorder business. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, is multi-channel retail and B2B correlated? If so, how? And for this question, I don't want to monopolize answering all of them. I'll, I'll open it up if, uh, if Maria Solano or Ali has any strong thoughts on that to give everyone a chance to respond. Well, maybe what I would say in regards to that question is that if you think of multi-channel retailing, that's something that could even that could be taken either by a B2C business, someone who or a brand that directly sells to to and customers, whereas a B2B uh, brand while selling I don't know multiple uh, customers around different locations through different channels. Uh, so, yeah, I would say they, they might be somewhat connected, but not fully. Um, because, every, again, probably the, the main message here is that whether, whether it's the way you decide to go to, you must make sure that um, you satisfy uh, customers' ex expectations and make, the, um, make your website, make your content, make um, as easy as possible. So it's easy for customers to take action and to, to engage and to come back to your site, which is uh, very, very important. Yeah, I would like to add a few lines to that point also. Uh, Multi-channel retail simply means that uh, your multiple sales channels together, uh, you know, selling the products and generating revenue. So multiple sales channel, B2C website is one sales channel, B2B portal can be another sales channel. Magento can fully support both uh, B2C and B2B because it supports multiple websites and in uh, you know different websites you can have some different features activated. Another thing is your multiple channel, another channel can be your uh, uh, the marketplaces, eBay, Amazon and such marketplaces for which Magento has some plugins available through which you can connect your uh, eBay seller account and Amazon seller account all in Magento so that even if any order received in uh, the marketplaces, those orders will sync back to the uh, Magento e-commerce and Magento admin can see that and can process further action. So yes, there are uh, some ways through which definitely Magento ensures uh, multi-channel and even B2B is also a part of that channel. Uh, next, uh, next question is, uh, if I opt enterprise, what additional features will I have access to? I think this is in the context of B2B. If anyone opts Magento Enterprise, so will they get anything, any additional features, additional B2B features? Um, so the short of that is uh, no additional than we already described earlier. And the roadmap uh, features uh, that we discussed anticipated for Q2 of 2017, uh, those are more enterprise specific. So uh, moving forward, there will be more default B2B uh, functionality for, for enterprise as opposed to community. Okay. Uh, next question, I think uh, Shulogno can answer this question that, uh, How will the integration help my Magento store? Uh, yeah, so uh, integration is a very important, it plays a very important role uh, whether you're operating in a B2C or a B2B uh, model and integrating your Magento store with your 
back of his ERP solution is very important because uh, so your Magento store is going to be used for showcasing your uh, products, uh, your items, or you know, the services that you are offering to your customers and for taking in orders. But uh, as a standard practice, most of these information that you showcase or you put up in the Magento store are defined and maintained in your back office ERP system. Like the products, the SKUs, uh, their different details, uh, their inventory, all this information are generally defined and maintained in the ERP system. So, uh, in, so in order to have them again, uh, you know, put into Magento, it's better you have a connection so uh, between the two platforms, so that if you ever ha if you ever have an updation uh, being made in the back office system, like in ERP, uh, for example, maybe the prices get changed or maybe some details get changed, maybe a few more variants uh, get added. So then it can automatically be uploaded, uploaded into Magento and can be there. So you need not uh, you know care about manually putting it into the Magento. And the other way also, so when you are collecting orders, uh, you know when you are uh, getting orders from the customers, those orders are most likely to, to get processed in your ERP, where you do the from where you do the uh, delivery, where you do the create the invoice. So the order details also need to be you know pushed back into the ERP system. So these are just two examples, you know, listing items in the Magento or pushing in the order details uh, into your uh, ERP, or also getting the stock from uh, your ERP into your Magento. So there are several other set of information that needs uh, to be there in both the platforms, and to avoid you know putting them in the two sides manually. Uh, it's always it's always a it's, a it's always a great idea to have an integration between the two platforms. Okay, thanks, Lobo. Uh, the next question, which I can see here, is, what are some innovative ways that you have seen which improve and increase client adoption to B two B e commerce? Well, I would like to answer that question, and I think basically. There are like uh, three three major innovations that have been seen. Obviously, some more spread than others. On one hand, uh, we can go back to the case of mobile wallets, as we were mentioning on mobile for B two B as a um, way to capitalize on the forces. Um, imagine you're use when you're using credit cards or using paychecks or some of the most traditional methods. Well, that might be more time consuming. Uh, for both parties to complete the payment, timeliness might get longer, and you're even not sure of of the security with along the transaction, right? So, for example, with mobile wallets, uh, again with the tokenization system they have, which manages uh, all data as encrypted, well, it's it might be even easier for you. For example, say you're you're in a meeting face to face with your B2B client. Um, you can close a transaction faster, much faster, and much more conveniently than than with traditional methods. Also, um, another way, if you want to look at it on the mobile context, is several apps. And um, basically, I think the innovation and the new approach that the businesses have uh, assumed there is to uh, give a high priority to contextual relevance. So. Uh, I mean, when you use an app on a mobile device, you want to you will go for a concrete action, and you compel all the user experience and the mobile side just to accomplish that. Make it as simple as possible. And finally, something that is very very important, given the rise of millennials as to the big buyers, is adopting multimedia content and making it practical. Uh, so, for example, offering trainings, demos. Is most. I mean, it has been seen recently on a while, but it's been really, really effective um, to uh, allow B two B buyers to adopt um, this this type of businesses and this type of deals because this content they've done the job for their sales rep and they teach your clients how to use your product to learn about your product without feeling like they they've been re cold reached by somebody who just wants to push them an offer. Okay. Thanks, Maria. Uh, the last question that we would like to take is uh, when we can expect next major release for Enterprise Edition? Um, Magento is planning, if you're talking about the next release, uh, two, well, 2.1 is already out, and they are planning quarterly releases uh, with new functionality. Um, but for the next uh, 
for the next major round of B2B features, they are anticipating uh, Q2 of 2017. Okay. Thank you. Great. So with that question answered, uh, I'd like to close this session for now. We'd like to wrap up this. Uh, thank you all for your participation. Thank you, Plumtree. And thank you, Commerce Blend, for your contribution in this webinar. You're welcome, Subhan. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Thank you for, for collaborating on us with this.